Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the invitation that we are allowed to speak with you. Perhaps you ask yourself, what can I do next after that day of interesting things we have heard? What can I do for myself to develop? This is within you self, because development of the world without fight and without a strong force is can be made by changing yourself. And this is a sort of a practical lecture where I show you what you can do. Human beings develop always. Think about yourself. Do you have the same opinions, the same attitudes, the same emotions and feelings like you had about 10 years ago? Are you happy about the same things when you consider 10 years ago? Probably not. Often human beings undergo development after negative experiences. Life in paradise and long phases without sorrow or grief lead to a sort of phlegmatism. And I think everyone has experienced that already. You ask yourself, what has these words to do with that toy? <laughs> Perhaps you can remember that when we leave today. I think this toy is a very good picture for that development with negative experiences. The toy will not move until there is a key which is turned. And the more the key is turned, the more the toy will go and develop. Unfortunately, this key is always a negative thing, <laughs> or often a negative thing, not always, but often a negative thing. And to go away doesn't mean to run away, but perhaps to change something in your mind that is also meant by this picture. Human development and my lecture is based on a, um, on a verse of the Talmud. This is a Jewish um, text. Perhaps you have already heard about this. It says, consider your thoughts, then they will become words. Consider your words, they will become deeds. Consider your deeds, they will become habits. Consider your habits, they will become character. Consider your character, it will be your destiny. This presentation is based on that verse. So we go step by step through this text. Chain of correlation, I call this. We have um, two different kind of thoughts we can have, positive thoughts and negative thoughts, that lead to positive words or negative words, that need, leads to positive deeds or negative deeds and in the end, to positive or negative habits. What does that mean? There's a good saying which says, a war does not begin at the battlefield. A war is already a deed. It's not beginning at the battlefield. At first, we have negative thoughts. And when, then we start to speak about it, and then the war commences. 
So there is a logic chain from our thinking to what happens. Often repeated thoughts, words and deeds lead to habits and will then form our character or our personality. And habits are sort of automatism in our body. So we don't have to think about it, it's automatically done. From the Sanskrit, I brought a little um, extract of a verse, which I like very much. It's only an extract. It says, Yesterday is a dream, and tomorrow only a vision. But today, the present time, lived properly, changes each yesterday in a dream of happiness, and each tomorrow in a vision of hope. So we can have now a look what we can do to live properly. We have heard today uh, several times about the human thinking and aspects of that, why we think what we think. There are several aspects forming our thinking. This is, for example, the personal personality of our former life. We come with this personality on this earth, in this life. We get some values, especially from our parents or grandparents, which they tell us. Friends and our family, they tell us about their experiences and this influences us also. We make own experiences in our life. We have heard about that several times today. We perceive with our senses the world around us. And then we decide what I've seen, this is reality. And I make an interpretation of what I have seen. Last but not least, we have the emotions which influence our thinking. Emotions have two qualities, that is power and the value. Power means they can be strong or less. And uh, the value means they can be positive or negative. Emotions appear both in our minds and in our body. Everyone knows the physical reaction when you, your emotions skyrocket in you, you get a red hat or a loud voice or you start to tremble. And this is the bodily reaction. And in the head, um, you have automatic thinking patterns perhaps. And uh, perhaps you also change your willingness to change your behavior. Normally, you are very kind, and now you are said no. I try to be a little bit harsh. A little detail, we want to go in a little detail about the perception of the world, because if they, that is making up our mind and our forming our thoughts, we have to consider that. We have with our eyes a, a purpose to see something and we consider this flower to be yellow. Therefore, we say this flower is yellow. This is reality. A bee cannot see dark red, but it can see ultraviolet, which we cannot see. For the bee, the color has a different color, and uh, the flower has a different color. So what would be 
the reality for the bee. And you can enlarge on that. A dolphin can only see gray shades, different shades of gray. Dogs can hear sounds we cannot hear. So what is reality? And uh, Erwin had a nice uh, picture of an atom today. Um, we have seen the, the nucleus and very far away the electrons moving around. So there's quite a lot of nothing within an atom. And an atom forms matter. So if you think about that, or an iron br uh, brick or iron block, it's hard to believe that there is a lot of nothing in between. Therefore, we should consider when we say, I know it is like this and that. Also, what we see is a question of relations because the human perceptions, they have a special range where we can see something or where, where we can perceive something. If it is too small or too big, we cannot perceive that. If you have a look at an aunt and ask her, are you in a garden in a special town? It would probably say, what are you talking about? I've never heard about that. This is not existing, but it is. So if something is very tiny compared to the surrounding, it has a difficult to see what is the reality. Also, if you have a look from outer space on the Earth, would you see the human beings? Or would you say there's nothing? What is reality? That is just, uh, I wouldn't say a warning, but um, you have to keep it in mind if you next time say, I have seen something and it is like it is. Just one little digging deeper into the interpretation and priorization of perceptions of the human beings. Human beings like to have explanations about what they see and what they receive from their environment. And then they have theories they build about it. For example, I would be happy if I were rich. If I would be happy if I would be loved. I would be happy if I were beautiful. My life would be easier without my partner, with a different job or different boss, without my demanding children, with nicer neighbors. And these theories lead to appetite, to desire. If I feel a lack in myself, I want to have it. I feel that I lack it and I want to have it. How come the emotions into the game? If someone knocks on my theories and wants to undergo this, I feel uncomfortable because it's my theory. And then emotions run high and you, you start to think negative in a negative way. And um, yeah, this is where we think the other must be mistaken. He's on an error path. Why do we suffer with our thinking patterns? I already said to you that you feel a lack. I don't get what I deserve. I want to have something. If you have something, you fear to lose it. You say, you I can't stand it any longer. So you have something what you don't want to have. This is also a problem. You don't want to have something. 
you hate it. You say the circumstances are bad or I would if only something happens. And also changes in our lives often lead to suffering because human beings don't like changes. They like to the traditions, to the rituals we have. That is the reason why we often have these rituals. And uh, they normally tend to avoid changes. But the whole life is nothing but changes, as we already heard today. So why do we suffer? Because we feel that our desire or appetite is not stilled. Let's take a short look at the characteristics of thoughts. Nowadays, we are able to measure thoughts. We can um, have these waves measured by the EEG. I think you already know this, and you have already seen perhaps uh, studies in the TV. Sometimes you see some uh, information there. I uh, have some examples where this um, is very interested shown. Uh, the, the influence others with this important sentence and also the strength and intensity of the thoughts are of major importance. I have seen um, a film where a very affectionate couple, a man and a woman, they were separated in rooms and the man was sitting in front of a computer and was told, when you think your loved woman in the next room is having positive thoughts on you, please press the button. And the, the wife in the other room, she was completely cut off. She got a random generator telling her, now think in a positive way on your husband. And the um, the, um, the end of that was obviously that the times th the husband pressed the button were exactly the same. The random generator told her, told her. Yeah. Also, you have heard about the handicapped people who can control devices with their thoughts or a prosthesis, artificial legs, for example, or the computer or um, information from hypnotized people. They were, for example, told just the to mention that it is just a thought. You feel that it is hot in this room and the temperature of that hypnotized person really ra rose in, a, in rose. Or um, a dia diabetes person was told you were given an injection of insulin and afterwards they measured the blood and um, the physical reaction could be verified because um, the, the blood uh, glucose rose also in, the, in him. So, our thinking is very important. There is the saying, thought is the father of all things. As a man thinketh, so is he. We better say, as a man has thought, so is he, because there is a time uh, lap. Belief can move mountains. And belief means you take into consideration that, that something is true. So I have four recommendations what we can do or you are invited to have a look at it. Perhaps something is there. Um, what you want to take with you at home. We are still on the thought matter. Consider your thoughts. And we start with analyze and learn. The second recommendation is decide for your development concerning the thoughts. 
The third is actively, actively counter steer bad thoughts. And the fourth is train concentration and attentiveness. So we go into the first uh, recommendation. Analyze your mind and thoughts if a bad thought appears or bad emotions rise up. Realize what happens with you. I think everyone can easily think about a bad talk or uh, bad uh, situations where we normally start to have negative thinkings. And a good way to get energy out of that is make an analyzation of that. You can ask yourself, perhaps, what is the trigger why I start to have negative emotions? My mother-in-law always starts saying ba ba bap and then the negative thinking starts or something like that. So was, what is the trigger of it? One, when does this trigger appear? What is the reason behind this negative thinkings or emotions? Can I exactly describe them? Not just say I, I get angry, but can you really define what angriness you feel? Have, ever, have I ever changed my thinking or my emotions in other cases? Was I successful? How could I overcome this thinking? What must, must happen to change my mind? So really do an analysis. Whatever it is just an ex some examples, you can s look whatever you want. So see what happens with you and don't run away. Observe how you respond to whatever happens. This is some examples for you to make it a little bit clearer. So you feel, for example, angry and now you have the possibility to look what kind of angriness is it. There are different kind of angries, angriness, <laughs> for example. You can ask yourself, why is this topic important to me? Do I fear to lose control of this importance? On what thought pattern is this based? Do I think compassion could overcome this anger? Other questions you might, might ask, if you insult, for example, other people, and believe me, we do it much more often than we think. It mustn't be a very bad uh, insult, but sometimes little words or so, or thoughts, we do the insults. And just try to analyze, why do we do this? Do we think the other one has done the same to us? Do we think the other one is better? or I am better, what is behind that? Analyze and learn. There's also the learning component. Learn about the human thinking. Try to avoid ignorance. The best, or one, one very good thing is to attend the course Understinken. <laughs> which I can really recommend. <laughs> if we understand what we, uh, we can proceed on our way to development and also question yourself if something happens to you, whatever it is, why happens exactly this to me at this moment? What is the lesson we should learn from that, what has happened? It's worth thinking about it. 
and it's difficult to get an answer quickly and easily. Sometimes it takes quite a while to get the solution. Another thing to learn is to reflect on special expressions. For example, what means compassion for other beings for you? If someone asks you what is compassion, is it just cry with the other one? Or are there different possibilities behind it? So if you reflect on that or on other words, this is also learning and development. These are some ideas where you can ponder upon. <laughs> Forgive others, gentle patience, love without conditions, feeling of unity with other beings. I have a survival kit for you or a first aid kit <laughs> for you because obviously we are all normal human, be human beings and emotions rise up or bad uh, thoughts come and if you um, are not able at that moment to make an, an analysis about this, don't try to suppress it because if you suppress something it will even be more energetic, so you feed it and this is not so good. So if you are in that situation, perhaps a good idea would be to concentrate on something else. Just try to get um, your thoughts off this topic. Decide for your development. If you think about uh, your day, how often did you have positive thoughts, negative thoughts, or trivial thoughts, which don't really matter? Think about it. It's not so funny, <laughs> but it is obviously the reality. So um, the second recommendation is decide that you really want to have the strong wish to develop and you, do you want to have your feelings and bad um, thoughts under control. Now I bring you some uh, examples about how to actively counter steer, what you might do to counter steer negative um, thoughts. You can consider about how I can develop compassion, how I can comfort the others, develop happiness and satisfaction. For very important, how can I be a good role model, a good example to other people? This is very important. Develop readiness to help the others, how to protect the others, how to be kind-hearted, how to be calm. This calmness is in different possibilities. Have an inner rest, an open, unbiased mind. The difference is being excited. Be fearless and encouraged. I have to speed up a little bit. Uh, actively counter steer means also um, try to overcome the need for glory, wealth and respect. Very, very difficult. How to get uh, control of yourself, how to have patience and confidence, how to avoid the mistakes, how to be humble and decent, the control of yourself, is a little bit more explained. Do not get angry if someone insults you or annoys you. Don't fear, don't fear distress in the view of the world's challenges. Do not hurt others. Do not show your disapproval of other people by facial expressions or body language. Do not rebel against your karma. The last, um, um, the last point is uh, in a special color highlighted somewhere, somehow. Um, this is try to find a way if someone criticizes you, which happens and very often will happen, without hurting the other, without having throwing uh, bad words at them. 
How can we do this? How can we do this? Perhaps by asking back, what do you mean by your criticism? Can you give an example to me? Um, please tell me what, it, what feelings did arise in yourself. This might be a good reaction. The last of the recommendations is train the concentration and attentiveness. Concentrate on what you do and not on the result of bonuses you will receive. How often do you really concentrate? Normally we do several things at the same time. Eating and reading. Talking on the phone while sitting with others together. Concentration is a form of meditation and perhaps a good way to consider that if you do the next time uh, things in parallel. Very interesting thing is never expect thankfulness. Do it because it has to be done, but be thankful yourself. Very difficult. Think about how you can help others, how you can inspire them, cheer them up, reassure them, and let your spirit come to a rest and watch yourself. This is train your concentration and attentiveness. We come to the words, consider your th uh, thoughts, they will become words. A great amount of our negative karma is caused by words. But how can this be evil? easy if you think about lies? But also to remain silent if you should speak, because you have perhaps seen something um, which is important for another person that you speak. Falseness. Yeah, you, today you say this, tomorrow this, or to one person you say this and to the other this to be stone-hearted in your speech, loud, aggressive, insulting, ironical, or to do senseless speech without beginning and end, and I have to look <laughs> that I don't fall into the trap. <laughs> so just some examples, what you can consider if you want to watch your words. Consider your deeds. This is try to live according to ethics. Set a good example. This is the story with the role model. Ask yourself what you can do for mankind. Serve or help other beings. And there, if compassion requires action, then inactiveness will become a deadly sin. even if inactiveness is caused by fear. But don't help if your help will humiliate or annoy the other. Don't help if the other will go on walking on the wrong path or if your help will cover a problem. Then your help is not so very good. Don't help if you assist other people's laziness or insensitivity often found by parents who do all for their children and they put away each little stone in their way. We have to consider this. Don't kill, torture, beat other beings. Don't earn your living causing pain to other beings. Every being fears pain and death. Try to live in friendly coexistence with others. Do not bring further violence in the world. Stand up for your beliefs. Don't just talk about it, do it. Change a habit. To make something a habit, you have to repeat it again and again until it's automatic. But Mark Twain said, you cannot throw out a habit out of the window. You have to kick it down the staircase step by step. So it's really a work to do. 
I don't know whether you know this. To change a habit, there is a book um, written by Will Bowen. Uh, he, uh, the book is called A Complaint-Free World. And there is a little plastic band delivered with this book. And this uh, author said, each time you feel, you think about something bad, you have bad emotions or bad thinking, or your um, speech is bad about something, you, uh, yeah, you are not satisfied, then please change this band on the other arm. And lots of people who read at the beginning this book said, oh, I don't, I don't have a problem with that because I do, do not do it very often. And they were very anno uh, astonished how often they had to change this. And this makes it in, sets it in your mind uh, how often we do this. So the author says 21 days without changing the band is okay, but the f almost no one reaches that. Okay. To switch back uh, shortly to that decide for your development, the easiest way to change a habit is to have the strong wish to do so. Every person who just tried to change it, uh, for example, to stop smoking, uh, knows that the strong feeling and the strong wish to do this is very important for that. So we are here on the habit and on the thinking part. The last page is now Human beings develop always depending on their experiences, their karma delivers to them and how they react on it. Other human beings we deal with are meant to bring a lesson we should learn. Consider what that might be. This is development. We are not perfect, we make mistakes, but we can try to be a little bit better each day. This is development. Life itself is development. And I want to close with a short sentence from the pop group En Vogue. They said, change your mind and the rest will follow. Thank you very much. <laughs>